Let's talk now about what a thread is. So a thread uh, is different from a process and that it doesn't have its own address space. So what it is, is either we've got a CPU core that's executing. And so that of course has registers and its own stack. Or we can also look at it as a saved set of registers in a stack that could execute. So for example, imagine here we have a stack. Okay? And this is going to represent the running thread. Okay? So we've got our stack. It's being executed. We've got some registers. And then all of a sudden, we want to stop running this thread and start running another thread. Okay, so what we do, we want to save the state of everything. What's the state? Well, there's memory, but that's shared state among all the threads. So what's specific to the thread? The stack and the registers. So what we do then is save these and then restore another set of registers and stack. And so go ahead and restore this. So save these, restore these. Now what does it mean to save the contents of a stack? Do we need to actually save this content somewhere? Well, no. Presumably these two stacks have to be in separate locations. So what it really means is that threads have separate stacks, and what we save is the registers. Because one of the registers is, in fact, the stack pointer. So if we just save the registers, that will be sufficient to do this saving and restoring. So we can have multiple threads. Each contains a set of registers. And so we've either got the executing thread, which has the its own registers, right? Or saved threads, non-running threads, which have the state of the registers when they stopped running. Let's talk now about non-preemptive context switching between threads. Okay, so non-preemptive context switching. What that means is that the thread explicitly gives up control when it's ready to, to another thread. So let's look at an example. Let's say we've got two threads. So we're gonna have th these threads executing different code. So let's look at B. So this is the code we're executing in B is we're going to have a loop, and we go through, and we do some stuff, and then we'll yield. So yield is going to be our explicit call that says we're willing to give up the CPU to another thread at this time. And then we'll have another thread, A, which will be very similar. So it will go ahead and, again, loop, but it'll do other stuff in its loop. So how are we going to represent a non-running thread? Well, we're going to do that using a context. So basically the saved registers. So we're going to define here a context. So this will be a structure. And we'll store within the structure uh, five registers. OK, so we'll go ahead and store EDI, ESI, EBX, EBP, and EIP. Let's look at kind of what we're missing here. We're missing the stack pointer. And the reason is we're going to actually represent that implicitly. We're going to store these registers actually on the stack of the non-running thread and store a pointer within the stack. We'll see that in a moment. But what are we missing? We're missing like EAX, EBX, ECX. How can that be? Where are those? Aren't those important? Well, the fact is the Switching from one thread to another is going to occur with a call to yield. EAX, ABX, and ECX are all caller saved registers, so that the compiler, when it's compiling this, when it sees a call to yield, knows that yield may change EAX, EBX, and ECX. And therefore, if it wants to save those values, the caller needs to save those outside of this call to yield. So that's why we don't care about those. Let's look at how are we representing these threads? Let's go ahead and have an array of context pointers. 
we'll call them threads. And we'll have an array of two of these. We'll also store the current thread. Okay, so just as a number, zero or one. Let's say A is the one that's running right now. Okay, so threads at zero is A. Let's just represent this array. So we have two entries in it. And we really don't care what the value of the first one is because current is currently zero. So that means A is currently running. So it has its registers in the actual registers. Threads at one is more interesting. So threads at one is going to be a pointer to a context. So let's look at a context. So B not running. This is B. And when I say B's old stack contents, let me just say it's B's stack contents, right? Whatever B's stack contents was at the time we were going to call yield. And then we also have the values of this context. Remember, these are, so the structure is laying these out low addresses to high addresses. The stack grows down from high addresses to low addresses, so these occur on the stack in reverse order. So what we have here is the EIP. Okay, where's this EIP? It's the instruction pointer uh, of the instruction after the call to yield. Okay, because basically we have a snapshot of what happened at the time we call yield. So this instruction pointer pointing right past yield. And then we have EBP, E, BX, ESI, and EDI. Where is the pointer? The pointer points to here, which is the beginning of the context. Because remember, we read the context, context from low memory to high memory. Okay. So there's our stack pointer that we're, is actually the top of the stack that includes the context. And that's what we're storing in this array of pointers to context. Okay, so this first one we don't care about. We'll look at it in a little bit when, as we switch. The second one, that is threads at one, is a pointer to the non-running thread. And this encapsulates everything we need to know. The old stack content, these registers that will be restored. So let's look at what happened when we call yield. Okay, so we call yield. Well, let's look at the actual code for yield, right? So yield, what's it gonna do? Well, we need to actually switch. We need to save the registers of A, update threads at zero, restore the, the registers from B, which are stored in threads at one. So what we'll do is we have a switch routine, which is actually written in a similar language that we'll look at separately. What's that going to do? Well, we're going to switch the address of threads at, can we say threads at zero? Well, no, because yield is also called from over here. So we need to just use threads at cur. So when we return from switch, what do we know? We know we're now going to be running B's code instead of A's code, that is threads at one's code instead of threads at zero's code. And we also know that threads at zero will be updated. We'll look at that in a moment in more detail. But the other thing that we need to do is we need to just update current. So that's all yield is. Switch is a little more interesting. We're going to look at switch in pseudocode right now, and then shortly we'll look at the actual assembly code. So what is switch going to do? Switch is going to take a switch is going to take a pointer to a pointer to a context because it's going to update it and a pointer to a new context. And what it's going to do is basically, and this is again going to be in assembly code, it's going to push four registers. Okay, it's going to push in order EBP, EBX, ESI, and EDI. What about the instruction pointer, you say? Well, 
let's go ahead and take a look at that. So let's look at A running and its stack. So this is A stack contents, and then A calls yield. When A calls yield, like any other call, it's going to push an instruction pointer or to return to. So we're going to get an instruction pointer pushed onto the stack that points right past the call to yield. So there's nothing special about yield or switch that does that. It's just a standard procedure call. And now what happens? We called yield. Yield calls switch. Switch now pushes another EIP, which you can return back to here. We're in switch. Switch is going to push four registers. So we now have. Okay, now what happens? After we push the four registers, it's going to update the old pointer to be the contents of the stack pointer. So that is going to update here. So what's happened now is basically we've done our save. The saving included pushing things on the stack, and then also includes updating the context pointer that represents the current thread to point to where those stack contents are. And then we need to update the stack pointer. So now all of a sudden, our current stack is over here. The SP is there. Next thing we're going to do is we're going to pop four registers. Before we do that, we should probably update an error here. And the error here is, just as we saw over here, we actually have two EIPs because we had two calls. We had one call to yield, like here, and then yield actually calls switch. So that means we have a instruction pointer to returning from yield and an instruction pointer for returning from switch. So we actually have a second EIP in here, and that EIP points all the way over into here. So that's still sitting on the stack. So we popped, we're popping four registers. So let's just go ahead and pop those four registers. Our stack pointer is now updated, and our stack pointer points at the top of the two EIPs. And now, all of a sudden, well, let's finish the switch. So the switch is going to return, and that will return popping the CIP, updating the stack pointer. And now we are executing just after the switch. So as we can see, before the switch, we were executing in A's thread within yield, about to call switch. When we return from switch, we're now running on the other thread. We're running on B's thread. So that's the magic of doing our context switch. And now, as we return from here, we update current. So current now becomes 1 to represent the fact that that we are now running on th threads at, at 1. And when we return from yield, we return from this EIP, and we go back into B's loop, going about its business until it calls yield. So yield gives us this back and forth. Here's the code for switch. So we can see the declaration just as we looked at. And really, all it does is take the two parameters on the stack move them in temporary registers. So EAX holds old, EDX holds new, and then we push the four registers. We go ahead and save the current stack pointer into star old. We move new into the current stack pointer, pop the other registers, and return. So really very, very similar to our pseudocode that we saw for switch. So that's how threads work. We are what we've seen is actually some code directly from XV6. So that switch is part of XV6. The declaration of context is part of XV6. Threads can be used in different, I was going to say contexts, but that's a little uh, ambiguous here in different ways. One way you can use threads is at the user level. So you could have written this code, in fact, and you can do this non-preemptive switching between threads 
in your own code. The only place it gets to be a bit confusing is if you start making kernel calls, because if you make a kernel call in one thread, that's going to block all the rest of your threads running. Threading can also be used within the kernel, and that's what we're going to see in XV6. So how it actually uses various threads, one thread in fact for each user process, in order to do context switching.